I think I should never do a four bottle episode ever again. <laughs> I keep saying that when I keep doing it. Welcome to Whiskey and SV. I'm your host Sam and tonight we're going to be drinking some Maker's Mark bourbon. So if you know anything about bourbon and uh, you probably do if you're watching this channel but let's assume if you, if you didn't um, you're probably familiar with this general kind of bottle profile right this red wax melting down the side of a bottle this is like the brand signature for Maker's Mark and it's such an iconic thing that any bar you go around the world and if they have bourbon they probably have maker's mark in fact recently i was in japan in golden guy and i had a bunch of random drinks but of course their bourbon was maker's mark so i was drinking all night and i was thinking wow this is a really good bourbon so now that i'm back here in california i want to see how the different uh, i guess more upscale and more special release versions of it stack up against each other what you probably don't know about Maker's Mark is that whereas a bunch of other bourbon producers, they take advantage of the fact that in their rickhouse there's different floors where the bur barrels are and the temperature differential can be quite high. Uh, most bourbon producers take advantage of that to produce diff barrels with different profiles of their um, distillates. But Maker's Mark is very much about a consistent profile. So they actually rotate the barrels every once in a while to make sure that uh, all of the barrels kind of get the same consistency at different uh, at the same temperatures. And that has been always the case for them, except for recently. I mean, I guess in the last couple of years, they've been doing more experimental stuff. Uh, and the way they do experimentation obviously isn't because, because most of their barrels kind of uh, have the same profile. What they do is they finish them in, with staves. So uh, a bunch of their wood finishing series are basically where they take a wood stave, like a piece of wood uh, or more than one usually, right? And they put it in the barrel to age with the bourbon for a while. And uh, then uh, that gives it different profiles. So a lot of their uh, store picks and private select programs are exactly people picking different state profiles and putting them in. And then that's, that's how they come up with these like different um, uh, taste profiles. The, uh, I guess the star of the show for tonight is that my latest acquired bottle, which is called the Lost Recipe. And the reason why it's called the Lost Rep Recipe is apparently because it's a recipe that none of the uh, private selections uh, ever chose. And it has a stave, um, it's their French mocha stave, which was apparently discontinued. There's a whole story about this here. I don't want to go into too much details about that. Um, I tried this earlier tonight and it just tastes so good to me that I had to make an episode to see how it stacks up against some of the other ones that I had on shelf. Um, of course, uh, the one that makes sense to compare it with is uh, the... Uh, most recent, I guess, uh, hype about Maker's Mark, which was their Celerage one. Uh, the Celerage that I have here is actually the 2023 version. I don't yet have a 2024. If you remember, I reviewed this uh, last year. It is uh, made from 13% 11-year and 87% 12-year. And it is a bottle that's 57.85% ABV. Um, I guess Fred Minnick really was excited about this one, but then when he tried it, he didn't really do good in his blind. And for me, it was kind of lackluster given how hard it was to find and how expensive it was when it first came out. I think it's a nice whiskey, but it just I, it never really stood out to me as something special. Uh, this last recipe, um, you can see they've adopted this bottle shape now. And uh, I don't want to go into too much details like how, uh, you know, what this, this was made from, but it's just made from like a 10... Uh, French mocha staves, which is apparently discontinued, and it's it's so much cheaper, right? I think this the MSRP on it is one forty one fifty, but in secondary it's like three hundred plus. This I got at Costco for sixty seven dollars, and even if you find it in secondary, I don't think even I don't think there's even a secondary market for this. But even if there was, it'd be under a hundred for sure, I would guess. And then I have a sample of the new wood finishing series. It just has MM Heart on it. So this is the um, Maker's Mark 
wood finishing heart wood, heart series. And the reason why I have this here is I, I, I have a sample here is because I do have a bottle, but my bottle is uh, still with my friend. And um, I just have the sample to go on by, uh, thanks to my uh, friend Randy. And of course, um, I could just do it uh, with those three, but I figured, uh, why not? I might as well put in the regular cast strength version in there as well, because I just want to know this bottle is like $35, right? And I want to know how does the $35 compare to the wood finishing series, which was supposed to be over, but then they came back with this new one. Um, I don't know why I'm showing you this because uh, the bottle is not here. I'll throw up a picture. But yeah, um, so the price differential is quite large, right? It's like in the order of 35 bucks, in the order of 70, 80 bucks, in the order of like 60, 70 bucks, and in the order of, well, 180, but realistically 300 bucks. So without further ado, I'm gonna pour these. Uh, you'll notice that the cheap one is actually screw top, which is not a bad thing, because in Japan, every bottle is a screw top, even the more expensive ones. But yeah, let's... Um, All right, so these uh, probably have different colors, but I'm not gonna like, you know, sweat it too much. We have number one will go on the regular cast strength. Number two will go on the MM Hearts. Number three will go on the Lost Recipe. And number four will go on MMCA. All right, so starting from the first one, the thing I forgot to mention is that, of course, Maker's Mark is known to be a weeded bourbon. That means um, apart from corn, which is obviously uh, um, required to be more than 50%, uh, the uh, secondary grain in it is not rye, it is wheat. And wheat has a tendency to make things more sweet and well-rounded compared to rye, which is more spicy. So on the nose, this definitely has that like weeded bourbon profile. It's pretty aromatic. Uh, somewhat fruity, quite nice. Um, I would say, um, yeah, very nice. Nothing offensive, nothing that stands out really in any uh, special way either. Okay, this one has a uh, same sort of like weeded nose profile with the um, aromatic uh, sort of taste, but it also has a little bit of a minerality. I would say this is more interesting to me than this one. Yeah, definitely more interesting. Okay, going to the third one. Hmm. This has a Rick House funk that the other two did not have. Some sort of like red fruits, uh, darker sort of profile. More like molasses and, but definitely recognizable as a maker's mark in terms of the weeded profile. Okay, going to the last one. Hmm, this is nice. Much more fruity uh, than the other two. Has a little bit of a, a bubble gum note to it. Very interesting. Yeah, so far, I think uh, the most interesting on the nose have been these three. Maybe this one the most, actually. Um, all right, let's go for the palettes. Wow. That is um, much denser, darker, and flavorful than the nose would suggest. I'm actually getting a lot of like chocolate notes on there, which makes me think it might be the last recipe. It's very lingering um kind of cocoa and honey notes it's it's a uh, very very enjoyable um extremely good finish it's um kind of surprising that i didn't get that on the nose honestly yeah the nose does not indicate any cocoa at all but the mouth feel is insane it's uh very very good really really good all right let's go to the second one now i'm getting less of the minerality on this one okay Let's try the pad. Yeah, this is um, definitely not as good as the other one. I, if I was to guess right now, I would say it's the calf strength. It has a little bit of a, a wheat bitterness, which I get on a lot of young weeders. And yeah, definitely doesn't have the same complexity, doesn't have the same uh, profile in terms of like the cocoa or the sweetness and whatever. It has a little bit of an ethanol note to it as well. So. I would guess this is the youngest one, uh, and I would guess it's this one. All right, going to third one. Interesting. This also reminds me of the first one. It's like sort of more um, dense, dark, woody, and uh, chocolatey notes. 
I think my palette needs a rest. <laughs> Alright, we'll give it a rest and see. Alright, I'm gonna take some water as well. <laughs> Let's approach this again. Yeah, for sure I get definitely like a Rick House funk on this. That I don't get on the other ones. I don't know. It's not as enjoyable as the first one. The, the first one definitely had a much more sort of chocolate aroma. I don't wonder if that's the water that's like ruining it for me. Let me go back to the first one. Actually has a nice finish. Oh, but this is something else. The, even the nose now is opened up. Well, this is by far the most flavor, the more flavorful one. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the last one. This is definitely the, the most flavorful nose. And I remember the MMC had the most flavorful nose. Okay, let's go to the last one. Yeah, um, the nose on this is really amazing, uh, which makes me think it must be the uh, uh, Cellar Age, because I remember the Cellar Age blew me away uh, um, from like the aroma perspective, but when it came to the palette, it was just fine. I didn't really think it was anything special. And yeah, from an aroma perspective, this is definitely the shit. So let's taste it. Some citrus notes in there. Similar profile, but no, there's no cocoa or chocolate notes. So, okay. I, I think I'm pretty confident that this has to be uh, the cast strength. This has to be the MMCA. I don't know between these two which one is the heart edition versus the other one. I think I prefer this one. So I hope this is the last recipe. This is the heart edition. I think they're kind of close, to be honest. They're not. Um, significantly different but i definitely prefer this actually now on the nose as well yeah there's a lingering chocolate note on it that's super nice i really like that okay, let me try this this is also very nice just not the same sort of profile so yeah i would guess um lost recipe cast strength uh heart and mmca Let's do the reveal. First one is four. This is the Celeraged. Okay, <laughs> so I like the Celeraged the most. All right, number one. Yep, this is the uh, cast strength. It's very obvious. Uh, this is number three, which is the Lost Recipe. So I guess Lost Recipe and uh, MMCA are pretty close, which would make this number two. All right, so I guess I learned that MCA is actually pretty good, even though I thought, um, but for the price, of course, uh, the last recipe would be the winner, but um, I'm surprised that I like the MCA so much. I guess I was just like thrown off by the cost and I didn't want to spend so much money, I guess. But objectively, that's pretty nice. Um, it's surprising that the heart has such a nice nose, but yeah, the palate is kind of a little bit bitter even. All right, well, it is what it is. Um, I think I should never do a four bottle episode ever again. <laughs> I keep saying that when I keep doing it. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. And I hope to see you in future episodes. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.